Hello, Internet. My name is Quinn, and this is Blondie Hacks. This is Lathe Skills, a series of quick videos on getting started in machining. This is episode 11, Indicators. This is a topic that's often confusing for beginners. There's a lot of terminology that uh, overlaps, so uh, I hope I can clear that up for you in 10 minutes. If you like my content, please consider supporting me on Patreon, where I post exclusive project videos and 3D models, engineering drawings, lots of cool stuff. Okay, let's dive in. Dial indicators come in a lot of different forms, but they fall into two major categories. And uh, this is often confusing for beginners because the names are very similar. Uh, these guys are dial indicators, and these guys are dial test indicators. And these guys are typically for measuring larger distances, and dial test indicators are for doing very fine work measuring surface finishes, alignment of uh, vices, things like that. Uh, however, they, they both work the same way. They are a clockwork mechanism internally, but with no escapement. So the linear motion of the plunger is translated into rotary motion of the needles at different scales by a complex series of gears internally. So starting with the more commonly used dial indicator, these guys measure fairly large distances by machinist standards. Uh, woodworkers can turn away now. So this is a standard uh, one inch plunger and you can see that uh, it's measuring on two dials. There's the large hand and the small hand, much like a clock. So the, uh, the, the large hand is measuring the finest increments, which on this guy are thousandths. And this is gonna be indicated right there on the dial, so you know what these divisions are. And then uh, the larger scale is gonna be measured with uh, the smaller hand, much like a clock again. And uh, since this is a one inch travel, you can see our one inch, it's broken down into tenths there. So you can see how those guys will count all the way up to an inch. Now, much like the hand wheels on a machine tool, the, uh, the indicator is giving you relative distance, but they all have this dial on here that you can move, and that allows you to set a zero anywhere you want. So whatever you are measuring, you can push this plunger up against it some arbitrary amount, which we call the preload, and from there, you can set your zero, and now, suddenly you have an absolute measurement. Okay, great, so we have a really precise way to measure one inch of distance. Well, what use is that really? It turns out, quite a lot. You can use it to, for example, measure concentricity. You can use it to measure squareness on a surface plate. You can use it to cancel out cosine error in your compound when single point, single point threading. You can use it to calibrate other measuring instruments. You can use it to, uh, as a stop when turning to a shoulder on the lathe. So uh, there are, uh, infinite uses, frankly, for a dial indicator. And uh, you know you really can't do precision work without them. In fact, the more you get into machining, the more you'll find you never have enough of them. Now your dial test indicator is a slightly different beast. They typically measure horizontally with a pivoting arm rather than a plunger. And they are typically much, much higher precision. Uh, the large numbers are still thousandths, but the tick marks, each of those ticks is a half thousandth as indicated right there. So you'll use this guy in really high precision applications like finding surface imperfections or measuring squareness on a surface plate or uh, indicating in a vise on a mill, those types of things. Okay, so let's look at how we actually use an indicator. Uh, much like machining, with indicators, setup is half the battle. So uh, whatever you're doing with your indicators, you're going to need a way to hold it in some very specific, usually inconvenient position uh, to get the reading that you need. So to that end, uh, you typically are going to use an indicator arm with an indicator. And uh, they're, these come in a lot of types, uh, but typically they have a, a magnetic base. And uh, this is the much beloved Noga arm, which is, uh, has a single knob. And so you can position this arm uh, in any position and then simply tighten that knob down. It, it's hard to overstate how convenient uh, these guys are. And uh, I would honestly consider a, a mag-based Noga arm to be a required piece of equipment for any beginning machinist. The mag base itself deserves a little extra attention because they're pretty wonderful. Uh, as you can see, it's a magnet that you can turn on and off and it's a permanent magnet, there's no power. So how does it do that? You might think, oh, well, it's just moving the magnet further away from the surface so it can release. That's actually not what's happening. There's actually a specially shaped block of aluminum inside this base, and in special shapes, uh, aluminum can cancel out magnetic fields. And uh, that's really important because you would think magnets are useful in machining because there's a lot of iron and steel everywhere, but in fact, uh, magnets are the bane of the machinist because they collect chips, and once you get chips stuck on things, you'll never get them clean again. So uh, this guy allows it to be magnetic in the machining environment 
without attracting any chips because once this is in the off position, this has no magnetic field in any direction. So uh, this, that's why the mag base is kind of the only place that you really see magnets in use and uh, this design is, is really, really remarkable. Dial indicators typically have a lot of ways to attach them to things. There's often a lug on the back for a bolt and there's often these little dovetails which, for example, fit into this Nova arm and uh, that's a very convenient way often to quickly attach them and remove them. And on this dial test indicator we've also got a long dovetail here, we've got another one up here, and there's also a precision ground shaft on there. Now this guy can also attach to uh, the Noga arm there, but because it's a precision ground shaft we can put this in collets on the mill or uh, all sorts of other uh, precision fixtures. So uh, this shaft here uh, is often the most used form of attachment for the dial test indicator. When you're first starting out, you can do everything you need with one of these adjustable Nova arms. Uh, however, as you get deeper into machining, you're going to want to start optimizing your processes to get more efficient, and that means customizing indicator mounts for specific situations. And uh, one of your best friends in that regard is the 3D printer, uh, but you can also make these types of fixtures uh, in various other ways. You can make them out of wood even, you could make them uh, on a mill, uh, however you like. But the idea is that these are quick to install for a very specific task that you do a lot. So this guy, for example, fits on a quick change tool post. And I will uh, uh, link this on my Patreon so that uh, you can print your own if you like. Uh, and then this is a uh, Waze mounted clamp. So this guy clamps onto the Waze and allows you to measure uh, travel and set stops for uh, the carriage when you're, for example, turning to a shoulder. And you saw me use this guy in my turning to a shoulder video. Now here at the surface plate because I want to show you uh, a little bit of technique with dial indicators. The number one thing to be aware of when using them is cosine error. So uh, they are accurate when you are activating the plunger perpendicular to its length as you might imagine. But if you start measuring things at an angle, if you have your plunger let's say at a 45 degree angle, now you're actually measuring the hypotenuse of a triangle, not the distance from for example, where the indicator is mounted to the surface. So the more of an angle you have on your indicator relative to the thing you're trying to measure, the more so-called cosine error you will have. So try to make sure that your indicators are always perpendicular to the thing you want to measure. Now cosine error is actually most insidious on dial test indicators because as we said, they have this horizontal arm and this arm is designed to be adjustable so you can move it to get a convenient angle uh, for what you're trying to measure because often this guy is mounted you know on your spindle or in some awkward position and sometimes you need a little bit of clearance for the body of the indicator you know to move it along a surface something like that but the more of an angle you have on this little arm again the more cosine error you are actually introducing so when using these guys try to keep this arm as straight as you can and still get the measurement that you need. And sometimes you'll see dial indicators incorporated into other tools and fixtures. So for example, this guy here is a flatness gauge. It's got three dial indicators arranged in a triangle with a machine surface and registration pins. And as you can see, these are just standard dial indicators that have been reused for this fixture. Now these guys are among the most high precision things you will own, so treat them with respect. Don't drop them, don't get them dirty. Treat them like a fine watch because in fact that's exactly what they are. And to that end, they are expensive, uh, and when you're first getting started in machining, you know you're looking for areas to save money on tooling, don't skimp on these guys. Get high quality indicators, uh, and in fact, you can get them secondhand often for very reasonable money. All the ones that you see here uh, were purchased on eBay, uh, in several cases refurbished, much like uh, fine watches. Uh, quality indicators can be taken apart and serviced, refurbished, and uh, you can do that yourself, as I've done here, or you can send them away and often save money that way. So don't skimp on these guys, get high quality indicators, and take good care of them. But I thought it'd be fun to do a little dial test indicator demo here. So let's check out the quality of these cheap one, two, three blocks that I got off Amazon. So I've set up uh, my dial test indicator here on the surface plate with uh, a small amount of preload. And much like with the plunger style, the importance of the preload is to get the indicator into its range for what you're trying to measure. You don't want the arm of the indicator to ever come off of the surface or to bottom out the needle during your measurement because those will of course invalidate your measurement and potentially even damage the indicator. So I've got a little bit of preload on there and I'm going to use the fine adjust on my Noga arm to get this guy zeroed out because these guys are so touchy it can be hard to use the 
zeroing ring on them sometimes. So we'll just zero that guy out there. And then we'll just move this guy back and forth and see how good the surface is. So as long as I don't fall off the edge, as you can see, this guy is actually surprisingly well ground. So this guy is very flat and no detectable imperfections. Now, let's do the real test though. How repeatable are these blocks? Here is a second block, same manufacturer, same package. And surprisingly, it is also the same height. It's a little bit shorter. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it's maybe a hundredth of a thou shorter than the other one is, at least in this dimension. So this has been Dial Indicators in a Nutshell. I hope you found this useful. Please do consider supporting me on Patreon. There's a link down there in the description. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.